Baltimore's leaders call it a culture of violence. Homicides and shootings take hundreds of lives each year with no signs of slowing down. But it is a certain culture fully to blame. And can the city effectively change it? In tonight's Operation Crime and Justice, Dan Lamparello investigates just that. For nearly seven years now, Baltimore has seen its homicide rate hit unprecedented highs. It's violence that's left thousands dead and even more injured. And as our elected leaders say it's caused by a so-called culture, others say it's much more complicated. The tape tells the story of this city, a summer of shootings, creating crime scene after crime scene. So far in 2021, more than 230 people have been killed in Baltimore. Another 460 plus were shot and survived. A crisis that's been blamed on a culture. This is about breaking the cycle and culture of violence in our city. This is a cultural thing that has to change too. A deep rooted culture and until we change that culture, you know, we're going to have problems, but we have to change that culture. The messaging from Baltimore's mayor and police commissioner has been as constant as it's been consistent. These individuals speak to the culture of violence that we have been talking about for so long. They believe the acceptance of illegally carrying weapons and using them to settle scores on the streets is deep rooted into the fabric of the city. This is something that Baltimore has been fighting since before I was alive. And while Mayor Brandon Scott and Commissioner Harrison say they're committed to changing that culture and in turn curbing crime, it's a complicated concept. What will it take? It will take a great deal of time <laughs> to change culture. Richard Rosenfeld is a criminologist with the University of Missouri in St. Louis. He says many cities don't have the luxury of time with so many people being killed on a daily basis. Once violence increases, however, it takes time for it to begin to decline. While Rosenfeld believes addressing the cultural issues that drive crime in many cities across the country is important, finding ways to stop violence in the short term needs to be a priority as well. There must be a balance. You cannot discount, should not discount the role of the police in efforts to bring down uh, levels of violence. Back in July, Mayor Scott unveiled a new comprehensive violence prevention plan, which he says takes a more holistic approach to the crime fight. And while it does include certain partnerships with Baltimore police, the five-year plan will certainly take time to implement. But right now, people need some immediate um, solutions, some immediate intervention. Former FBI agent Dr. Tyrone Powers says plans can only offer so much comfort to those in a city where violence is an everyday norm. They're interested in outcomes. And so they're not interested in you telling them about a plan. They're not interested in going to a website and reading about a plan. But as their city leaders promise change, nearly everyday scenes like this that show time is not on their side. <laughs> Mayor Scott says he believes his crime plan can help reduce gun violence in the city by 15% each of the next five years. But since he unveiled that plan back in July, there's been more than 30 homicides in the city, putting us above where we were this same time last year. We are learning some concerning new details about the change in leadership at Augusta Fells. As Project Baltimore's Chris Papps explains, the principal brought in to fix that failing school has been under investigation twice in the last five years. Experienced and transformational. That is how Baltimore City Schools describes the new principal of Augusta Fell Savage, a West Baltimore high school caught up in a major scandal. So Project Baltimore looked into that principal's past and found there may be cause for concern. Our mission at Augusta Fell Savage is that we will prepare 21st century leaders and learners. This is Principal Kamala Carnes. In 2020, she became the new principal of Augusta Fell Savage in West Baltimore. 
Last week, City Schools released the explosive results of its internal investigation into the school, which found grades were changed and enrollment was inflated. The district assured parents the school was now under the guidance of an experienced and transformational principal. But a Project Baltimore investigation found that principal has a questionable past. Where student achievement is our priority. The year was 2016, and Claremont School in East Baltimore was under an internal investigation by North Avenue. This complaint, filed by a whistleblower and obtained by Project Baltimore, claims Claremont's former principal set up multiple bank accounts in her name, including an account with the store Target. The bank account at MNT for student activities, wrote the whistleblower, was used for catering, conferences for the principal, daycare. The complaint continues, all the accounts are in the name of the former principal, Kamala Carnes. And high achievement is the expectation, not the exception. In December 2016, staff investigator Richard Mitchell sent this letter to the whistleblower. The allegation of mismanagement of the school activity fund against Ms. Kamala Carnes is substantiated. We can't continue to keep getting this wrong. We have to correct this at some point. Jason Rodriguez is with the nonprofit People Empowered by the Struggle, a group calling for city school CEO Dr. Sonia Santelises to resign while threatening a class action lawsuit against city schools for failing to educate generations of students. Past intolerable behavior shouldn't be allowed shouldn't be allowed. City schools declined an interview, but told Fox 45 News in a statement that Carnes is an effective principal that was selected due to her experience and successes leading at other city schools campuses. The district is deeply grateful for her leadership at Augusta Fell Savage Institute as it recovers from the scheme under its former leadership. But that Claremont internal investigation was not the only one involving Principal Carnes. Are you Principal Carnes? No comment. You don't even know what my questions are. How can you say no comment? In September 2019, Carnes was the focus of a Project Baltimore investigation into allegations of grade changing while she was principal at Joseph C. Briscoe Academy in West Baltimore. After a two-year internal investigation, North Avenue found those allegations to be unsubstantiated. But when the Briscoe report came out, Carnes was already at Augusta Fells. But this recording obtained by Project Baltimore, where Briscoe administrators discussed changing a student's grade, was never addressed in the Briscoe report by North Avenue's investigator. He couldn't have any work because he wasn't here. <laughs> what can we do? Okay, so we have to do a grade change? Is the final grade in there right now? Yes. To this day, the public has never received an explanation. The system is broken. Rodriguez says enough is enough. Principals found to have mismanaged a school's activity fund should no longer be a principal. He and his group believe it's time for Baltimore City Schools to fall under federal receivership. He's convinced someone else needs to run this school system because it has shown it can't run itself. We have to have a new day um, and it has to begin with federal receivership, dismantling the whole system, and holding those accountable, you know, not, not just presently, but in the, in the past as well. I'm Chris Pabst, and this is Project Baltimore.